What's up, y'all? This is the third, is it the third episode? It's the third episode of Abode Live. And I don't even have my uh, my headsets in. Hey, what's up, Jazz? How you doing? Jasmine joined. Uh, shout out to Mello. She gave us, uh, gave me the custom Black Lives Matter mask. And uh, yeah, so we're about to, today I got Ryan nicely getting ready to join me. Uh, he's gonna talk, we're just gonna talk, talk shop, talk all things life and, you know, real estate and everything else that's going on, man. There's a lot going on right now in the world, so. Ooh, there he is. Before Ryan joins, I'm gonna, hey, let's just take a trip through the office as we always do. Oh, d Derek just, just walked by, so we're just gonna walk through the office. It's, it's kinda, you know, we're in phase two still, so Gail's right here. Gail, oh, Gail's getting, oh. <laughs> Gail's getting ready to coming in. Gail's doing her job, doing her thing. Yeah, it's, there's really no one else to see here. Come on, Ryan. Come with it. Oh, oh man. What's I was up, just, man. I was oh, just, man. I was just there. You were just here? Yeah, I was just How there. How you doing, man? Oh, oh man, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up a seat too. Yeah, I just got back from a uh, little vacay. Oh, and, oh, uh, dang! We got a lot to talk about then. <laughs> and how's uh, it going, Heidi? I see you. What's up, Heather? What's up, man? Heather, you've been uh, you've been on some vacations too. Yeah, Heather, I seen they went somewhere. I forget. I, don't, I didn't. Heather's into that camping world. She's into that camping life. Yeah, I, man. Her better than me. I I need I need some help out there in the wilderness. <laughs> I can handle myself, but like it's not my it's not my normal mode. You so, already got yeah. you already got the, you already got the beer for it though. Man, I'm trying. This is this is a lot of this is a lot of weeks growth though. Like I I don't grow a beard like you do, man. Like you you go like two days and you already got a beard. Like, right. I do. I gotta go. It's gotta take me some time to really to really get going so man, let's talk let's talk real quick let's wrap real quick so you yeah. went on vacation where'd you go oh man i went to the cabo cabo san lucas oh y'all went to cabo yes oh, and dang. uh thankfully we went and got our covid test yesterday and we're we're negative so uh you know did it did it safely as well nice nice do you, don't you think, isn't it kind of interesting how you're learning how to move and navigate through this pandemic, wearing a mask, like just, you know, doing the doing the little things like to change your life up just a little bit so you can stay safe? Do you yeah. feel like you found a groove in that whole deal? Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I was I was late. I was late on the whole mask adoption. <laughs> um, it works. I was late on it, and then uh, I think I saw, I think I, I think I saw like a post on social media of all places, just talking about uh, like, hey, if if this if this could save one life, why wouldn't you wear a mask? Right. And I'm like, okay, you know, sure. Yeah. You know, that's I I get it. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know. I, I don't want. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not patting myself on the back, but I'm just saying we could all use a little. Like we have to be movable, you know, in our thoughts. Right. And, um, Absolutely. Our, our feelings, you know, we got to be movable sometimes. And and you know, just because you you change an idea or an opinion doesn't mean like you know you lost or. Yeah. Uh, can I ask a question? Do you mind yeah. if I ask? Like, so you you mentioned at the beginning, like you were, um, <clears throat> you were an, not anti mask. Like you you said you moved on the mask thing. What what at the beginning? What was it about? Like, because I always had questions. Like, why why are people angry about a mask? And yeah. and I just don't. I'm trying to understand. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. Yeah, preface with I was never like mad about wearing a mask. Yeah, not not that you were mad, but just like Yeah, I wasn't mad about it. Uh honestly and, and this was a few months ago I felt like this, but I felt like if I did that, and this is just me being honest, 
if I did that, I was feeding into the hysteria mm -hmm. a little bit. I can see that. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to feed into the hysteria. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, like for, for me and I don't know, this is, this is, this is tough, <laughs> but, uh, it's all good, man. Spill it out. We good. It's yeah, we're yeah, family. Yeah. I, 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 I would just say that I think that COVID is is really showing how I think of America in, as a whole has a culture of unhealthiness. Absolutely. You know, um, we have a culture of pursuing comfort as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And I and I'm I'm hitting on like the exercise, um, just recreation side of that. Yeah. Kind of kind of eating whatever you want to eat. <laughs> and that's that, that's a bad that's a bad combo. It's really a bad combo because I just had two little uh, boneless chicken <laughs> things from pizza. I just stopped in an office and they happened to have pizza and I had a piece of pizza and I was like, man, I just yeah. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not I'm by no means perfect either but um yeah i mean that that's that's a little bit about how how i feel now i'm not saying that there aren't uh you know there aren't exceptions to the rule um and i'm not saying that uh there are a lot of people getting sick right right i mean there are a lot of people getting sick and i think my my thoughts on this whole deal and it kind of leads into some other stuff that I wanted to talk about, but it's just like it's, it's almost impossible to know what and who to believe these days. Yeah, and part of that's by design, though, too. You know, I think that the attack on the media from the outset of the current administration kind of helped this along because it already and, and honestly i i agreed i actually agreed you know it wasn't like i was just saying yeah the media paints a narrative and does x y or z and i was like you know you have a point you know um but then to exacerbate that with you know the amount of unhealthy things going on in the world like whether it be lying to the media or saying, "No, I never said that," and then they, they fact check, and now all of a sudden you're just it, you're just exacerbating an already um, just unhealthy communi communications uh, model, if you will. I don't know what like mass mass media, however you want to portray it, but yeah, I'm with you. Um, yeah. So that that's interesting interesting take because I think so because you, you had mo some people who I've talked to and asked that question to and it was just like it was about the hysteria part I didn't want to feed into the media or I didn't want to um, you know I did, it's my freedom to and I was like you're right absolutely right um, but you know like are we in the I had a good conversation with someone who plays football in uh, in Europe right now he's in uh, he's in um, where is he at Prague. Uh, not Prague, Czech Republic, I think. Um, and he was just talking about the different countries that he had been to, Spain, Italy, Prague, Czech Republic, uh, all these other places in his, in his travels over there. And he was just saying, he was just telling me the differences between each country and how they were carrying themselves on the whole mask thing. And this was like in phase, when we were in phase one. And just talking about the differences between how countries were handling it. And he was just watching from afar here, because he's from here. And he was just like, yeah, it's just kind of, <laughs> it's kind of interesting watching this from yeah. where I'm sitting right now. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, to, to that point, Mexico only requires four and a half feet. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. Not six, four and a half. Interesting. Well, you know what? Everyone's to each country's their own. So we, we started talking about a little bit about, uh, I was just like, what's burning a hole in you right now? Like, what are you passionate about right now? Obviously, you guys are coming off of a vacation. You had a really, really busy time before that. Reed was holding you down. Shout out to Reed. Reed was yeah. holding you guys down, I imagine, during that time uh, with the Nicely group. Uh, and so what's what's burning a hole in your chest right now, though? Like, what are you what are you passionate about right now? Yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, as I was as I was getting back 
getting ready to come back home um, from Mexico a couple of days ago. Um, I mean, I am, uh, I, I think, I think the U.S., you know, we've got a lot of issues, right? Um, but I'm still, I'm still very proud um, to be um, an American. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I was just like, oh man, I want, I, I kind of feel embarrassed. <laughs> 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 like I kind of feel embarrassed. I wonder if they like they pity me at all, and I, I don't know. I really don't. I probably not. But um, I think the thing that I just think a lot about as I, I'm just fatigued um, by the like the, the war mm-hmm. that America is, is in with itself, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and it's I yeah, I'm just tired. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. and it's it's really easy for me to just be like like a spectator or you know you know just just watch it all unfold, you know. Yeah. Because I just I just don't I don't know if there's a place for me, you know, mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. in this like in 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 the war that I feel like is going on, you know. Interesting. Tell me more about that. Like what, um, yeah. Is that as far as like, you don't know where you like, not, I know where you stand. I know you have a healthy, uh, understanding of where you sit or, and it's always, obviously we're st- all still learning on that part, but yeah. like, what do you mean by you don't know where you fit in to this? I, that's interesting. I think, and I think actually I asked this because I'm sure there's a lot of people who, who probably feel the same way. I think there are, you know, and and I think the easiest way to blanket it is like politically, right? You know, there's some there's some people on the far right, there's some people on the far left, mm-hmm. and it's like there's got to be, um, there's got to be a whole cross section of people that are more just like in the middle, mm-hmm. right? But. Those people in the middle right now, do they have, do they have a group that they can go out, you know, on in in the city streets and protest their message or get their message out, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? um, and I feel like there are a lot of people like that. I feel like I am like that, and so it makes me really, it makes me really feel like uh yeah i don't know like i almost don't have a side yeah well i would argue that the black lives matter protest is the middle like to me that is the middle and the yeah and the people and the people who are on the far right or the far left they're doing their thing anyway you know what i mean but like when i was in Furcrest, for example uh i I saw people, there's a lot of middle people, you know, and I'm running through for mm-hmm. a and I'm seeing a lot of, and, and so I'm like, oh, okay, cool, you know, but the problem is, is the meat, like the media and all this other stuff happens and all we see is the meat, like, you know, a car crashing into a, a store and then you see that a million times. And so then, of course, that's going to, you know, if you have the T, I don't watch TV and I don't watch the news. I get all my news from Twitter. Right. But. You know, just still, it's just like, I don't need to see that over and over again, because I know that's not painting the whole picture. I know that's not telling the whole story. I know that's one person being stupid. You know what I mean? Like, that's one person who's like, that doesn't represent what I, how I feel. I'm not sitting there going, yeah, crash into that store, that storefront. Like, that's dumb. Like, what do you, so, but it gets lumped in with the Black Lives Matters protesters, you know? Um, right. What's uh, who was that? Latasha had a question. Said, "What's their message? What do you mean by that, Latasha? Uh, what 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 is their message?" Um. So anyway, that's yeah. That that would be my my take on it. Is like I feel like most people, I would hope, are all about humanity and reason, you know. And it seems like reason is something that we just kind of threw out the window, like. Is right. that a reasonable thing to think? Like when I was asking about the mask. Oh, uh, those in the middle, what's their message? Uh, Latasha had a question about who, yeah. what, what is the message in the middle? I don't know. Good question. Yeah. I mean, 
and I don't, I don't, I obviously I can't answer that question. Right. Um, but my, like my message would be like, you know, those on the right, those on the left, whatever, like, don't we have more in common than different? Absolutely. Right. Like, don't we, don't we all want pretty much the same thing? Yeah. I think we all do. And I, but I, I think the problem where that problem lies though, is, I, for, for personally, just personally speaking, from my experience, I want all of those same things. However, it seems like sometimes I try to go about doing that and someone wants to come at me like, kind of crazy or like I get a racial anything like something, like some microaggression probably at least three times a week. Yeah. At least. Like, and that's just as a grown man, like at least less now, now that we're in COVID, and we're not around people. So that's actually gone away, but now I get it via media. Now I get it via some troll that wants to be out there just doing, saying dumb stuff, you know, like. Yeah. And that's not yeah, representative I, of everybody though. I know, and which I know that. Yeah, and, and I would just say, like for me, and I mean, I think we can all agree on this. Like there's no, there's no winning in November. Right? Like no. <laughs> who's going to the polls who's going to the polls and feeling good about, you know, who they're who they're voting for. Right? And that's a problem, but it's also it's also a, a reflection of our country. Mm-hmm. Like where we are at politically right now is a reflection of our country. Absolutely. And here's an interesting thought. So you mentioned the middle, and I would say that the pick is for the middle. Like, I feel like the pick was, the Biden pick was for the middle. And here's the thing is like, I, I personally, my personal views on politics is I'm both, I'm Dave Jones. I'm not a Democrat or Republic, I'm Dave Jones. Like we're in right. 2020 now, I can order stuff on my phone. I can order a book in my bed at one o'clock at night and it's gonna be there in the next, like I have choice. And so right now the political process to me is void of choice when on all other aspects of our life we have so much choice it's unbelievable but it comes down to one thing which is to me the most important thing which is our leadership we don't have much choice in my opinion now i know there's right. a democratic process and all those things but why can't we just yeah. do it from phones we're talking about mail we're talking about mail like i have a phone that i can order i just ordered three books from and they're going to be at my doorstep tomorrow yeah. Like what? Yeah. What are you talking about snail mail for? <laughs> like, what are we doing right now? Like, yeah. I don't know. I just, it's it's actually, I'm fascinated by it all, to be honest. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I think. Uh, yeah. Is, you 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 ask good questions though, and I think there's more people that are reasonable than not. Oh, there totally are. There totally are. Um, but. Sometimes when you're reasonable, you don't shout as loud. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not it's not fun, nor is it click worthy, clickbait worthy to be reasonable and you know be open minded to to hearing different perspectives and things like that. It's definitely not the not the sexy thing to do these days. Right. Um, right. No, hey, man. I got some, I got some news to change the topic. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So last night, I went, watched my first NBA in the bubble game. Oh man, you're gonna get me! You're gonna get me started. And I hate. I mean, I, I'm just gonna be honest. Uh, I mean, I enjoyed the Rockets versus OKC. I enjoyed it a lot. It's good basketball, man. I I mean, I couldn't. But Chris Paul was on fire. It, it, it it's the most and I, I tweeted this last night even for all for all sports this is the most fascinating time and it's going to be the most it's the best playoffs in history like when a, when a, when else are we going to be able to say yo these dudes were in a bubble there's no crowd now we're going to see who's who you're not you're not jumping on a plane you're not there's no crowd there's no one to no crowd putting the momentum on you and the winds at your back 
It's like, you know, you've been an athlete. It's like being in an open gym and like, we're going to see who's who. Who's the alphas in here? That's like, true. Man, there's man. no advantages. We're going to see who the alpha, who's the real alphas in here. Open gym. I love it. So fun. I um, love it. It, it takes, takes me back. But uh, hey, um, has Jamal Murray gotten really, really good or no? He's I, I always think. been good. You know what's scary about that team, the Denver Nuggets, is Michael Porter Jr. is the best high school player I've ever seen. And Gary Harris, who just came back after six months, is every bit as good as Jamal Murray. Is he playing now? He's playing now, but he hasn't played. And, like, he played his first game last last game. And, and like, he's been out since the yeah. <laughs> beginning is, of the year. Is he playing tonight or no? I think he will. There are little small minutes, but he's – He's every bit as like when there was there were the tandem. I was sitting there going, "This these two guys are going to be the future of the league." Like okay, because it's the that jazz, it's the Jazz versus uh, Denver Nuggets tonight, Game Seven, and we get OKC in Houston tomorrow. The next tomorrow night, man. Okay, I'm starting, good I'm basketball. Gonna start to, I'm gonna start to tune in. Yeah, it's okay if you don't tune in for the beginning of the series. I get that, but the Miami and the Bucks series is going to be good. That's going to be a really good series. Yeah. Jimmy Butler's been one of my favorites for a long time. I love Jimmy Butler. I mean, just uh All right. So, we uh, know we know we know the Lakers are going to go to win a title. LeBron's going to be the GOAT after this year. If LeBron wins the title this year, he's the GOAT hands down. You win a you win a title in the year that Kobe dies and it's a pandemic. The season stops. You protest and boycott during the playoffs. Miss game like you couldn't make this story up if you tried. And there's still going to be people that are going to hate on him after they win. Because AD is the best. AD just scored 43 points. Here's the funny thing about the media. Media will sit there and say, oh, the Lakers are in trouble, yada, yada, yada. And AD is their second option. He just had 43 in a game, okay? And they're sitting there doubting the Lakers. Meanwhile, Paul George hasn't shown up for half the day series and he's the number two option for the team that's supposedly supposed to beat the Lakers and he hasn't showed up see every other second option on a team everyone's like questioning they're going who's the second guy and then the Lakers blow out the Portland Trailblazers and all of a sudden it's all oh, they need a third guy wait no other team has a second guy that's doing what AD's doing right now yeah not one so like how it, it, they just try to create these narratives. We know no, the they, Lakers are going to win. They got to keep. They got to keep people. Interested. They got to keep you interested. Yeah. Lakers are going to win. They're the, LeBron and AD are just too much better than everybody else. They're just at the end of the day, they're just better than everybody else. Are they the number one seed in the West? Yeah. Where are the Clippers? Two. Two. Okay. So they Clippers won't. are their best chance of the best chance of beating them, but they don't have any rim protection, so they're it's. Yeah, when does when LeBron decides to go downhill and start playing and get into the rim, nobody can do anything with that. And then you have AD cleaning it up. Like, come on, man, it's how much fair. longer do you think LeBron has? He just needs this repeat right now. He needs to win this one, win the next one, and then he can just ride off in the sunset and shatter the scoring record and you know do other stuff. Space Jam too. Important. Oh, I miss, Kobe. I miss Kobe, man. Kobe is the man. Are they so, coming out with a documentary for him? They sh they probably will. I'm sure. They probably will. I know one thing. Um, I know people want to talk like real estate. We are on a real estate channel. I know we got. <laughs> we're doing. We're doing what we know Trans we need to do in the office. Transitioning. Okay, here we go. All right. So talk let me go change my shirt real quick. Oh, <laughs> so let's talk about real estate real quick and what. Uh, you know, like how how has the market been for y'all? Y'all have been busy before, you know, we got on here and before you went on vacation. Did you come back to just the same stuff? Do you guys are you guys working with a lot of buyers right now? Are you working with mostly listings? What's it what's it like out there for you right now? Yeah. Um you know, I think you know, for for us and this is this is somewhat purpose purposeful but um you know it kind of just happens at the same time but we have been working with uh, typically just 50 percent half and half buyers oh okay um and you know obviously like that has been really advantageous for us um 
just knowing what it's like to be on the other side really gives us a leg up. Yeah. Um, you know, when we're doing business, whether it be with buyers or sellers. But um, yeah, I mean, I think we have experienced um, a lot of what, you know, a, a lot of other people in the industry have experienced, which was kind of a kind of a, a very short lull in March and April, just mm-hmm. because there really was so much unknown. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, to be honest, uh, in layman's terms, I think you had people saying, hey, look, I got it. COVID's a serious deal. I'm going to mask up. I'm going to put my gloves on. I'm going to stay six feet away from people. But I got to find a house. <laughs> you know? Like, For many reasons. What were some of the reasons that you heard people buying, like finding different homes? What were some of the reasons that you heard? Because, I mean, we've talked about them in our check ins and stuff like that. But Yeah. So definitely military was, was a. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that was a gas pedal. Um, you know, that was an initiator of people buying and selling. Um, definitely, you know, there's some other things still going on at COVID too, which makes babies. And when you have, <laughs> when you have babies, uh, you know, that forces you to move. Um, unfortunately, like divorces are still happening, right? Mm-hmm. So oh, yeah. that's causing, I mean, all of the life stuff, is still happening yep. um, and it's causing people to need to buy or sell real estate. So, right. Um, and yeah, I mean, I would say May, June, July for us, August, mm-hmm. it was, it was kind of nuts. Um, yeah. But, you know, thankfully, you know, Reed, uh, you know, obviously, me and Jess living together, just talking real estate a lot. Yeah, you know, can relate. Um, you know, definitely provides some um, continuity. You know, and then Reed. I mean, he's essentially. You know, we had about four months where he was an intern, just learning mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, he got through his first year of full time real estate, and now yeah. he's on his third. I mean, and he's. I mean, he's killing it. You yeah. know, and and we feel, you know, one hundred percent comfortable. Um, with him, you know, with buyers, sellers, anything. Um, yeah, he's, so, he's smart, man. You guys, yeah, he's he's all of, he's everything. It's been fun to watch you guys help him along, but he's also a very smart young man, and just he is impressive. Yeah, yeah, no, he he really is, and it's so crazy. I mean, he dude's twenty three years old. Yeah, and he's got he's everything 20. ahead of him. 23 years old. Yeah, that's crazy to think about. He's young. I'm old. You're you're still in your prime. <laughs> I know you got that baby and it's like, yo, I don't feel like I'm in my prime. Hey, trust me, you get out of it, man. I'm, I'm sure you can relate. I'm sure you can relate to this. But it just takes longer to recover these days. Oh, you know? yeah, for like, sure. You know, we got back from um, Cabo on Sunday around eight, uh-huh. you know? and it'll probably take me till tomorrow to like really feel myself. Yep. You know? <laughs> so I don't, know. I don't know. I already know, man. It's part of it's part of the growing pains, man. It, it's that means you're 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 becoming seasoned, and you're becoming wiser. That's what's happening. Yeah. No, you know the crazy part about uh, Tacoma, the median price I checked this morning was like upwards of three fifty. Like, yeah, when we started, I think it was at two forty seven, and that was in two thousand seventeen December, at end of two thousand seventeen. So, approximately two years, a little over two years, we've jumped in a median price a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, that's yeah. unbelievable, man. Yeah. And- and I say this in all sincerity, I really do. I would tell people to stop buying and wait it out if I if I thought that it was going to slow down anytime soon. Yeah, right. I prom- I promise you I would, but I but I also say this. When I got in the business in 2014, people were saying the exact same stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm telling you they're like, "Hey, you know, probably won't be this year." 
but probably be next year where we see a slowdown. I'm telling yeah. you, they've been, I have been hearing the same thing for five years. Right. And at this point, I, I just, I, I'm telling you, I, I tell people, hey, look, I would buy now because yeah. I don't yeah. think it's going to stop and interest rates are too good. Yeah, the int with the combination of the interest rates being low, low inventory, and then also when you look at like a fifteen-year to twenty-year trend, it never like yeah, it might have dipped during '08 and that that time, but like it it's all it's a straight line going up, like it's never gone back down. Oh, all right, man. There's a there's a, a shockman. That shock is leaving. Oh man, <laughs> I bet, miss him so much. <laughs> Um, yeah, but there's a trend of, you know, the prices always are going up and that's what we were talking about. Just get in the game, you know, like, and there's some opportunities that we talked about this morning in the condo market and having more condos on the market. Now, uh, we actually do have inventory in Tacoma in Pierce County in the condo market. There's opportunity there to just get in the game and yeah, you know, it might not be perfect for certain people or it might be perfect for certain people right now, but you're at least in the game where you can potentially get some equity and build some equity and, and, you know, then have some choices to make in a couple of years or three years or four years, the way things are going. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I, um, prime example, uh, in 2017, this is a great example of what you were just saying. In 2017, I helped, uh, a guy named Nathan Algara buy a house in DuPont. Okay. Mm -hmm. House in DuPont in 2017 had been on the market for 94 days. Okay. Wow. He, he bought it for two, 260. Mm. How many beds and baths? Uh huh. How many beds and baths? Two beds with a loft, two and a half baths. Nice. He sold his house yesterday for 355. Mm. How, come again. How much did he buy it for again? 260. 260 in 2017. 94 days on the market. Yesterday, wow. he sold his house in four days for 355. I mean, that's what? crazy, man. But it goes to show, like, hey, maybe you don't need that cream puff house that's right. on the market on Thursday and has eight offers on, yeah. um, you know, on Tuesday. Maybe, maybe take a look at that house. You know, um, and your real estate agent can help you out with this, but maybe take a look at this house and say, hey, you know what? It's got the square footage, the bed and bath count I want, and yep. I can do just a few things here. And I, I mean, that's crazy equity, not like yeah. call it a hundred grand in three years. I'll take that. I know I will too. All day. I can live anywhere for that. You know, I'll, I'll deal with something for three years for that or four years or whatever, you know, like three, three years, three years. Yeah. It's nuts. And then that provides you options moving out of there. And on top of that, you have the rates that are crazy low and I don't see any, they're not going to go up anytime soon. It doesn't sound like from what I heard. I don't think so either. So, and the thing about it is, is like, I mean, it's been in that 3%, even, even 5% is not a terrible right. deal. Yeah. Right. It's been there for the last five or six years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, it's funny that we're talking about this because um, this is one of the major drivers for when we talk politics and we talk about all of those things. These are some of the drivers that, you know, a lot of times we spend time on the social part of things and, you know, and media does as well. But what we're not doing on the other side of this is this conversation that we're having right now is what's driving a lot of people's decisions. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that, 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 that can't be ignored. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, yeah. It's, just our, it's just our reality. Maybe tying this all together. Um, have you seen or heard of the movie motherless Brooklyn? Mm -mm. I mean, I've heard of it. I think I heard of it. But I haven't it's seen it. Re re really interesting. Um, it's got some some big names in it, uh, but I'm not sure it was ever released. Maybe because of COVID. Maybe it was like direct, you know, directly to stream because of um, because of uh, COVID. But uh -huh. um, takes place takes place in New York in Brooklyn, and uh -huh. um, 
it centers around how New York City, uh, you know, did their quote unquote like slum clearing, right? Right. Um, yeah. Which, you know, again, not many people are familiar about. Mm -hmm. um, but it, that's the whole theme of the movie. Uh, you know, and they're going to put an interstate through there. You know, you know the deal. Uh, yeah. it's got, but it's got like Bruce Willis in it. Um, it's really uh, Edward yeah. Norton. It's got yeah, Edward I think I've, it. I've heard of it. I'm, it's an older movie. So it's an older movie. It could be. I don't know. Maybe. Huh. Yeah, I've, I've heard of uh, one thing. So, okay, if we're doing if we're doing that. So here's um, my two things that I've, I'm reading right now. Medical apartheid. Really dense read. I don't recommend it if you don't like. Yeah. But at the same time, I do recommend it because it just speaks on uh, racism in the health field. And it's just crazy. It, it is grotesque reading. Like, it's gross. Like, I'm just yeah. going, wow, this is brutal. Um, but Lovecraft Country on HBO. Mm. If you have not watched that, it is great television. Lovecraft like, Country. Lovecraft Country. It's like 60s racism meets monsters and aliens and all kinds oh, wow. of different. It's, it's random, but it is great. Yeah. Hey, Riss, what's up, my sister? Yeah, Marissa Harris. That's your sister? Yeah. She's dropping a book. Actually, she's dropping a book uh, October 1st, my birthday. Wow. And I don't I even I have a copy yet. I think I remember uh, meeting her at the like abode initial yeah. kickoff, kickoff yeah. party. So yeah, Lovecraft Country, and then I got a book called Chokehold. I need to read up, so I've been reading up on all the systems. I've read up on a lot of systems back in the day, like education, mass incarceration, uh, medical apartheid on the medical field. Obviously in education, I have a lot of background knowledge in that yeah. and the systemic racism that's happened there. And so now I'm going into policing. And I have yeah. two books, one of them's on uh, like the old slave catcher days on what, what that was like. and like how the police were formed and then chokehold which is like a prosecutor's uh it's really dope actually the way it's written um he's a prosecutor and he's basically just talking about ways that we can reform police based on from his perspective and i was like oh that'd be interesting read yeah so anyway that's, that's what awesome i uh you're reading all of those at the same time i mean i go through like i have like <laughs> I, do, I do like three books at a time Wow. And then we also have like uh, our our ones for abode. So like crucial accountability is like to me is one that I always go back to every week, every year. And then uh, never split the difference, which I, I'll go back to every once in a while on that one too. Nice. I uh, I started last week um, Maya Angelou's uh, autobiography. Um, mm. I think it's called "I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings." Mm. So okay. I'm excited, I'm excited to get into that a little bit. Yeah, that'll be dope. Let me know. Let me know how that goes. Is there anything else that you want to tell tell the people, man, that that have been tuning in? I appreciate you taking time today, man. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell the folks about the nicely group? What's oh, going man. on? I don't think we meant to get that deep on here, and I don't, you know. But hey, when we ever get to, whenever we get together, we always talking about something. Got got to man, life's too short. No, um, hang in there. That's all I can say. I know. In there. Don't give up. Days are tough, man. Like I definitely was rolling in today. Like, man, I'm just I don't got the juice right now. But I think I have a couple things that I have coming up lined up that's gonna give me some juice. I mean, I got you know you always got the juice, but like, you know, the juice that I'm used to having like comes from different people and synergy and being at events and doing stuff and then just getting ideas and being being with other people and you know we don't have that right now. So it's kind of like. Thanks, thanks, Natasha. Thanks. Yeah, uh, thank minutes. you, guys. Thank you, ladies. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not Heidi. I said Heidi. Heather, Heather Hendricks. Um, so anyway, yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you taking time, bro. Yeah, Dave, my pleasure, man. Um, have a great Tuesday, and I'll text you later when that game is on. Oh man, tonight's gonna be. I can't wait for it tonight. It's gonna be great. What time's it come on? I got, I got, I got. Uh, I think it starts at six. Six. I don't know. Actually, five or five or six. But I got I got Utah, man. Too much Donovan Mitchell. Too much I Donovan love, Mitchell. I love Donovan Mitchell, man. Too much Donovan Mitchell. Like it's hard to beat a team. Also, it's hard to beat a team three times in a row. 
Like that's the hardest thing to do. Like beating the team three times in a row, for whatever reason, it is really difficult. Oh, thanks, Austin. Yeah, that's uh, Barry Johnson. We got two. We got two of them in here. We got another one right back here too. Hey, what's up, Heidi? Heidi's in the spot. What up? <laughs> hey, hey, Heidi. Bye. <laughs> hey, hey, Dave. Before before we go, quest, question. Yeah. Knowing what you know about both these players, you need a point guard. Would you take Chris Paul or would you take Russell Westbrook? Chris Paul, easy. Okay. It's okay. not even a question. Okay. I need a floor general, man. Russell Westbrook is the reason. Like, he's he's phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. He's one of the best athletes at the point guard position we've ever seen. But floor generals always win at the point guard position. I don't care if you score 50 points. It's how you score the 50 points. Now, with that being said, you know, Chris Paul's never made it to the finals. <laughs> hey, but what he's doing this year with that Oklahoma City team, man, is unbelievable. Yeah. They couldn't even be in the playoffs. Yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, I don't know. It's, but, it's hey, tough. I mean, I, I think it's a really interesting conversation. If, I if, mean, because you, you take – you take uh, the Clippers when they had um, Blake Griffin. True, Chris true, Paul, true. Um, they should have been. They they underachieved. And Doc, I mean, and you got Doc Rivers. Doc Rivers. With they JJ, had a champion. With JJ Redick and Crawford, yeah. it's like y'all yeah. underachieved, man. Then Golden State came along and changed the game, and their team was rendered obsolete because they had too many big dudes with no shooting. Yeah. But yeah, yeah so it, here's the thing. Hold on to that thought because I think it all comes down to tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see. I can't. It all comes can't, down to tomorrow. I can't. I can't wait to see it. It's gonna be great. Yeah, it's good. Good basketball coming on, man. So, and then baseball. We even talk about baseball yet. That'll be on the next one, maybe. <laughs> I know. We, I know how you feel. The Astros ruined everything. I don't get let it. That, and I don't know. let the hat fool you, but. man. <laughs> the disgust on your face. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I would be too though. Like that was that was that was bad, man. Like that was some of the worst things I've seen in sports. The you know that that was. That Apparently, was it's okay to cheat. Well, I mean, all teams cheat in some way, shape, or form. But like to be that egregious about it and just that, like, yeah, that just rubbed me the wrong way. So at least, yeah, it was in the moment, and like, yeah, it just wasn't good. Not a good look. Anyway, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna get uh, get going and get back in the office and get some stuff done, man. I appreciate you hopping on. I don't even know if I can. Uh, oh, I can't end it. But yeah, appreciate you jumping on, man. Yes, sir. Abode live episode three.